All right, so we're coming up on two minutes, 30 seconds away from launch. It, we were hearing like there was a pretty good chance we were gonna hold it T minus 40 seconds, but surprise, now it sounds like we might not be. So uh, we are just a little over two minutes away. So a couple more things gonna be happening. Uh, we did just close out our propellant load on the ship and the booster. So 10 million pounds of propellant on that vehicle on the pad here at Starbase getting ready to go. We're going to start uh, clearing out all of the lines that are basically pushing all of that propellant to the vehicles. Those get cleaned out or cleared out uh, on the ground before we lift off. We're doing some final checks on the vehicle, the thrust vector, the thrust vector control that we're going to use to steer it, um, as well as uh, the guidance system doing its final alignment, just a lot of our, our final checkouts. But uh, we are... We are starting to hear that it looks like the range is going to be clear at our liftoff time of 7.25 a.m. Central, 12.25 UTC. So that puts us one minute, 20 seconds away from launch. Still not tracking any technical issues. That range clears the only thing that's been uh, potentially poking at our launch. So I'm gonna to start to quiet down. We'll hear our flight director for today, Tristan Pierce, give some of the final call outs. As of right now, we are one minute away from liftoff. Directors go for launch. Best words you could possibly hear 20 seconds away from liftoff. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Vehicles pitching downrange. Booster after chamber pressure nominal. Thirty seconds into the flight, the rumble's just starting to reach us here at launch control. Booster and ship, that avionics is the power, telemetry nominal. Thirty-three Raptor engines. Max Q. Through the maximum aerodynamic pressure, the most stress the vehicle is going to see on the way uphill. All right, our next our next major milestone coming up. It's going to be hot staging. We're going to see the engines ignite on ship to push it away from the booster. So hot staging is going to be the next thing coming up. First, we're going to see the booster's engines start to shut down. All but three. We're going to do what's called most engines cut off instead of main engine cut off, because three are going to keep going. And then we're going to see the engines on ship ignite. Right now, the tower team is doing their go, no go. We might hear some really good words soon, too. All right. 
and still see it up behind me. That is one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen in my entire life. Who's Coming up on hot staging next. Ship engine There's start most up. engines cut off. Stage separation. Booster, booster stage separation. separation. Hot stage confer separation confirmed. Ship under its own power. I'm seeing six out of six Raptors lit. Hopefully I got a booster on the way back to me. I'm gonna to send it to you guys in Hawthorne. Oh man, that was absolutely <laughs> incredible. I loved how the crowd- Chamber pressure is nominal. The crowd here in Hawthorne all went ooh at that first <laughs> view of the blue flames from the booster. As you can see there, first stage currently performing, or to me is uh, now making its way back to uh, the launch site. Again, we are- Ship avionics power and sound phenomenal. Uh, the booster and the tower are both performing automated checks to make sure we are go for the booster to return to the launch pad for that catch. And once those are complete, the flight director... Booster, booster, back for shutdown. Flight director is going for booster return. And we did hear that the tower is go for catch. So that was one of the big criteria we were looking for. This view we'll here. wait to hear that the we'll wait to hear that the gopher catch has been sent. Beautiful view here from the <laughs> ship. <laughs> and so exciting to hear that we got a gopher booster catch. That means it's going to be a really exciting morning. Again, the booster is making its way back towards uh, now land um, in order to make that catch attempt in the tower. <laughs> so incredible to see these views. You can see the ship on the right-hand side of your screen. All six Raptor engines are uh, under full power. Once again, the, the ship, or excuse me, the booster is making its way back to the launch site. We are going to try and catch it using the chopsticks on the launch tower, the exact same tower that it just launched from just, wow, five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the booster. Starship on nominal guys, trajectory. I, I can confirm the command was sent for the booster to come back. That is incredible. So I'm looking news. up right now. <laughs> it's it's pretty much right over ahead of us, and we can see it starting to come down. I can't wait for us to hear the sonic boom through Dan's mic. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is going to be incredible. It was so cool to hear the lift off. Uh, and so once again, um, a successful on-time liftoff of Starship Flight 5. The ship uh, the, has separated from the booster. The booster is there on your screen. It is making its way back to the launch site. We are going to attempt the catch using the chopsticks. We did hear the confirmation that the command was sent to the tower. Uh, we are go for catch. And in order to... Hey guys, we should just be at about... 30 seconds away from our landing burn. It's going to happen in three phases. We're going to land 13 engines, burn off all of that velocity. Oh, we can see it coming down through the plume. Booster coming in hot for booster catch. We're going to ignite 13 of those Raptor engines, and this view is incredible right now. You can see how fast this vehicle is moving on the left hand. Sure. Landing burn. 13 engines. Landing burn. We're now down to three Raptor engines. We can see those chopsticks now. This is absolutely insane. On the first ever attempt, we have successfully caught the Super Heavy Booster back at the launch tower. What an incredible view. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Uh, 
Dan, wow. uh, I don't know about you, but we're, we're losing our stuff up okay, here. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guys, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> even in this day and age, what we just saw, that looked like magic. That oh, was, wow. Dan, wow. You, you must have been insane. <laughs> we are still going wild over here, over this. Folks, this is a day for the engineering history books. This is a live view of the Super Heavy Booster as it has just been successfully caught back at the very same launch tower that it just came from. Dan, I love this. You are reflecting exactly what everybody else here in Hawthorne, uh, except maybe a little bit more because you got to see it with your own eyes. How was that? We got it. I mean, like, oh, like. I can't even, I can't even describe that. Oh, by the way, shit. Main engine cut off, ships in orbit, but I am, I am like shaking right now. That was. Yeah, it, oh, uh, this is not, <laughs> yeah, I let's, mean. Let's it's, check in on ship. It's hard to believe that. Starship nominal orbit insertion. All right, exciting news there. It's hard to believe that, you know, Booster isn't the only excitement that we have today. Just confirmation there. A gorgeous view of planet Earth behind uh, ship, the yes, ship. Safe and it is now in, in the orbit that we expected it to. This is just an incredible day. Live views there as the booster vents, some pressures there. That is a live view from the top of the tower <laughs> looking at the chopsticks. <laughs> I am still in disbelief. I'm trying to catch my tears just like the chopsticks caught the booster. <laughs> it has been nonstop <laughs> since liftoff. <laughs> So excited about everything that's been happening so far this morning with the booster having completed its job for today we are going to take a short break for the next 30 minutes we'll return back at t plus 40 minutes while the ship continues to coast before re-entry oh man and <laughs> as with previous flights starlink may actually enable us to talk with the ship through re-entry with no communication blackout we, of course, are still testing Starlink during this phase of flight, so nothing is certain. But if we do have views, we'll be sure to bring those to you live. Views or no views, we'll see you back here at T plus 40 minutes for coverage of Starship's re-entry, flip maneuver, landing burn, and splashdown. been an exciting day so far. <laughs> Even the crowd here is still so excited. 
We lifted off from Starbase at 7.25 a.m. Central Time. The super heavy booster and ship had a successful separation as well as a good boost back burn and good separation of the hot stage adapter. The super heavy booster then completed the landing burn with 13 Raptor engines igniting and slowing down the vehicle perfectly for Mechazilla to catch the super heavy booster for the first ever land recovery of the vehicle. <laughs> Yet. Uh, we still have, in about 48 minutes, the ship will re-enter. Oh, the flap, all the flaps <laughs> that will today, not that could. The ship will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Now, as a reminder, one of the main goals of today's test flight is for the ship to make it through the extreme heat of re-entry and to do so in a controlled manner. We learned a lot about this phase during Flight 4 and, as a result, completely reworked the heat shield, but more on all that in just a minute. Uh, now, re-entry is typically a portion of flight where we don't have communications with the spacecraft because re-entering, uh, it, it'll be re-entering at about uh, eight meters kilometer, or eight, eight kilometers per second or about five miles per second of roughly orbital velocity. Now, at those speeds, the spacecraft moving through the atmosphere results in friction and creates a plasma field around the vehicle. We saw this uh, in action on Flight 4 thanks to Starlink, and wow, it was breathtaking. That blank, the blanket of plasma ends up distorting communication frequency. So it's not uncommon to experience brief blackouts in communication, but hopefully that's not the case today. And, and Kate, that's, that's, that's where Starlink has just kind of been just the unsung hero and the MVP of this test campaign. I mean, it's able to give us data, not just awesome video, but also data in real time as we're going through re-entry. I mean, this is something that throughout the history of spaceflight just hasn't been possible. And this is an environment that is so unforgiving, so hard to model, so hard to understand. And for the first time ever, we're able to literally watch as it unfolds in real time, get that data in real time. And we're able to do that with Starlink. And it's it's great for us because we get to see something. We get to see the greatest light show on the planet or off the planet. Um, but what it means for this program, we're, we're able to learn tremendous amounts about our heat shield, our angle of attack, everything that we're doing as we're coming in through the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. And it's, you, you can't just thank it enough. And also special shout out, you're, you're gonna see some additional flap camera views. We've got, a really amazing team of avionics, cameras, electronics, software people who made all that possible. And so hopefully they're gonna give us an even better show on the way in today as we're coming in at about five times the speed of sound. Yeah, those flaps, Dan, that you see there, that's what's helping. Starship is in a good attitude for entry, approaching the entry interface. Some good call outs there, preparing for re entry for Starship. Uh, and again, that's what uh, Dan was mentioning those flaps on the vehicle. And if you've been watching us for the, the last few minutes, you could see that the flaps were uh, rotating around and helping orient the vehicle as it prepares for the beginning of re entry today. Yeah, exactly. Re entry will be enabled by that heat shield that you see on the bottom half. Uh, that heat shield is made up of 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles, and they are designed to insulate the vehicle during atmospheric entry. Uh, at that point in time, temperatures can be as high as 26,000 degrees Fahrenheit or about 1,400 degrees Celsius. Um, the, the, the design itself also permits for rapid reuse with no refurbishment between the flights. And fun fact that I think is just incredible in terms of uh, uh, scale, but the heat shield alone on the ship has a total mass of 10.5 tons, which is crazy because these things are really lightweight. Uh, they're made out of ceramic. We have a couple of them here. The one that I'm holding is used on flat surfaces as, uh, let's see if we go that way, um, because as it's flat, the one that Jesse has is kind of more what you see there on the side. 
Yeah, exactly. And having these different uh, shapes, the flat version and the curved version, allow us to cover a lot more of the surface area of the vehicle. Again, we need to protect every portion of it. So even, uh, even those curved surfaces and especially the hinge area, uh, if you watched Flight 4, uh, is really what we want to make sure that we protect. Um, and yeah, okay, these are very, Super very lightweight. lightweight. <laughs> but when you put 18,000 of them together, they add up to 10.5 tons, which is incredible. Now, we did mention earlier that the heat shield has been completely reworked. Oh. And so the atmosphere remains on a nominal entry trajectory. We can start to see that plasma now starting to build up on the side. It's not quite full plasma yet, um, but we are starting to see that color indicate uh, that the heat is building up on the heat shield. Yeah, this is such a cool sight to see because you really never really have gotten to see this live before, uh, before flight. Uh, before flight four. four yeah. <laughs> um, and as Kate mentioned, it's getting uh, a little more red, as you can see there on your screen. That means that heat is building up. But that's exactly what these heat shield tiles are there for, is to protect against this plasma and this really, really extreme heat that the vehicle is going to see for the, about the next uh, 10, 10 more minutes or so. Yeah, so uh, the ship will attempt to light the three center Raptor engines, uh, and those are the engines that can gimbal or maneuver or point, and they do that to help flip the ship um, until the engines point down so that it can land using the Raptor's thrust in the ocean. So that will happen after we get through this re-entry period. Um, again, now starting to see, and we also might start to see the flaps actuate a little bit here um, as the vehicle controls its roll uh, during re-entry. That was one of the main learning points from Flight 3 was the roll control. Uh, didn't work quite as well as we wanted it to. We <laughs> learned that we needed some redundancies. So we added more roll control thrusters and we'll see those in action as well today um, as that was a Flight 3 learning that worked better on Flight 4 and still enabling that same design today. Yeah. Starship has passed through 85 kilometers altitude. Flaps now have control of the vehicle. Great call out, as Kate mentioned, the flaps are controlling the attitude of the vehicle. And I love these views because it looks so calm. Uh, everything is relative, right? For so relative to this camera on the ship, it looks so calm and smooth, but the vehicle is traveling extremely fast. You can see the speed on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Starship is designed to land on Mars where there are no runways or other humans to help out. So we also want rapid reusability. So we're doing propulsive landing instead of a more traditional means like parachutes. Um, and so we will use the engines on this vehicle to help slow the vehicle down for a vertical landing. Yeah. Now, entry is going to basically happen in five phases. The first is low drag that lasts for about three minutes. Next is high heating, and that begin that beginning when heating increases um, uh, above the uh, heat rate breakup limit. Um, that lasts for about 10 minutes. We then have high dynamic pressure. Um, Starship will continue to slow down and experience increased aerodynamic loads during that phase, uh, and that will happen before reaching Mach 1, about a minute after. Starship is approaching the peak heating phase of entry, remains on a nominal trajectory. Okay, so that was phase two that he just called out um, that I was mentioning. After peak heating is that dynamic pressure around Mach 1, and that will uh, last about a minute after leaving the hypersonic area. And then we go into subsonic, and then of course, landing burn. Wow, what an incredible view. <sighs> the colors are so amazing. And the colors actually also tell you a little bit about the temperature that the vehicle is seeing as well. So I think that's pretty cool that we get this amazing live visual. A li Speaking of live visual, <laughs> the flap, uh, we have more views, uh, more cameras on board Starship, as Dan mentioned a few minutes ago. Uh, we are hoping that all four flaps will stay more intact than they did last time. <laughs> we did make some changes to the design in order to help enable Starship this. Starship is now experiencing peak heating, remains on a nominal entry trajectory. Great news there that Starship is continuing along the path that we intended it to fly. You can keep track with how fast it's going and how high it is above Earth using the display that is there on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. And 
guys, this is this is where we're really going to see a lot of those improvements from Flight 4 really come into action is as you guys kind of talked about. So it's called the static arrow. Those are kind of the poke out points on the flaps. Those get exposed to some pretty extreme heat environments. And so we added some additional basically wrote made it a lot more robust for the thermal protection there. And we, we learned not just from visuals and stuff like that. We had those missing tile tests on flight four where we intentionally left some out, kept in some backup layers. They're called ablatives, which means they just gradually melt away to help dissipate the heat. And we've got an entire layer of ablative underneath the tiles on this, on this starship today. So even if you get a gap in a tile or a tile is broken, anything like that, we've got essentially backup options. And what we're really trying to do today is do an on-target landing. As we lost the flaps, you lose a lot of your control, and so we didn't land right on target last flight. This time we're, we're trying to really nail the target uh, within just tens of meters. Um, and that'll just be a really huge step on feeling like we're closer to bringing a ship back. Um, obviously, there, there's a lot of work before we get there, but we just caught a booster. <laughs> we're going to start looking real soon at when we can catch a ship. <laughs> so the view on your left is as a helicopter passes by Dan, bound at Starbase. <laughs> um, the view on your left is a camera that's positioned near the nose of, star, of, of the ship, looking basically down toward the flap. Um, the view on the right is looking perpendicular to the flap. So we're looking basically bird's eye view onto the flap on the left-hand side, and then a worm's eye view uh, from the side with that view on the right. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Maverick just buzzed the tower. <laughs> he might be he might be coming back. So <laughs> now these views uh, brought to us by Starlink. It's incredible that we have this high definition capability. In fact, that view on the left. Starship is now halfway through the peak heating phase of entry. Remains on a good trajectory. Uh, so great news there, hearing that we're about halfway through the uh, the peak heating phase, like I said um, uh, earlier, this lasts uh, roughly 10-ish minutes. Um, and we did hear earlier that the flaps have control of the vehicle, so also good news there. Um, you know, it is incredible that we've basically had views the entire time. Right, yeah. <laughs> Thanks Although, to Starlink. <laughs> my memory did black out a little bit after booster catch, so I think we had views. Uh, but, you know, all through the coast phase, we had some beautiful views of, of planet Earth behind the ship as it was in its orbit. Yeah, and I, I also do want to point out on your right-hand screen, we've got a, a more encompassed view of the flap. Um, as we watched in, in Flight 4, the hinge area was the area where we got a little bit of that burn through. This view, this new camera view on the ship will help us be able to visually see uh, more of what's happening in that area. And again, we have uh, improved our uh, heating tiles, and so hopefully we've protected the hinge uh, a lot Our better this time. Chill has started. But again, these views are ad additional um, to the data that we get on these flight tests that help enable us kind of put the data that we get in the computer um, to the visuals that we see and try and align those and, and use that for improvements yeah. in the future. Now we heard a call out there saying that engine chill has begun. Uh, this is an indication that we are starting to flow a little bit of the uh, super cold liquid oxygen through uh, the hardware, through the Raptor engine, specifically the turbo pumps, uh, to help ensure that the hardware is at the right temperature uh, before we give a full push, a full th flow of propellant uh, at engine startup. So all of that to say, we are getting closer to the landing bird. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely are. And again, if you look at your the bottom right hand of your screen, you can see the altitude that the ship is. And it has been slowly making its way closer and closer to Earth. We're currently at about 63 kilometers from planet Earth. Um, and you'll see that number uh, trend lower and lower as we get closer and uh, continue through this reentry. 
Yeah, this is going to go on for a little, actually um, a, a while longer. We have about 10 minutes or so, roughly, um, before we execute the uh, the landing, the ignition for the landing burn, starting with the landing flip. Um, so we're making a controlled re-entry. This is one of the primary objectives for Starship today, is to demonstrate another controlled re-entry, even more controlled than what we saw on Flight 4. And so far, uh, that is looking good. And then as we, as we start to really get lower, we're going to start seeing the atmosphere's effects start to take place. And that's when we'll start, be, we'll be dropping our speed down closer to the speed of sound. You'll see the flaps start to maneuver. Um, we, we were able to do a landing burn on Flight 4, which kind of caught all of us off guard. It was pretty incredible after seeing the flaps survive through. And we're gonna try and do another one on this flight today. We tweaked it a little bit. So we're gonna try and splash down at a little bit of a gentler angle uh, this time, instead of just kind of hit the water and fall over. And the goal with that is try and keep the ship intact. And then if we're able to then get some additional video of it, again, that's, that's just more data and everything we can see everything we can get extra like a couple extra seconds or minutes of data coming from the ship after Starship splash has passed down through the peak heating get phase in. of flight approaching maximum entry dynamic pressure all right we're through peak heating coming up is basically max q part two where we're going to hit kind of that that part of the curve where we're still moving really fast and the atmosphere is just dense enough that we're feeling feeling the most pressure, but hopefully we're gonna start feeling a little bit less heat now. Looks like we got more views of each of the flaps on the ship as it's making its way back down to earth. And we did pass through peak heating and still got really good views throughout that whole period. Typically during the highest uh, heat on the vehicle, we, we tend to build up a lot of plasma and that's typically when we would uh, lose you know, connection um, or views of the vehicle. But again, with Starlink, we were able to get some live views throughout the, that entire process there. And we're coming up. We'll start here in a couple more milestones in about four minutes or so uh, when we start getting down to like the transonic, the subsonic, when we're we're starting to move closer to and beneath the speed of sound. And I mean, we're, we're getting live views. We're getting live data. We've got a couple additional tests on this one today where we, we left off some missing tiles again to to test some additional backup layers. Uh, we also have, I don't know if we can still quite see them in this view, but you may have noticed we had some kind of silvery looking tiles on, on Starship as well. And those were pretty much standard tiles, but they were wrapped in aluminum. And it was a pretty simplistic, uh, straightforward one where aluminum starts to melt at roughly the same temperature where steel starts to lose its strength, not necessarily melt. Um, and so if we if we see stuff melting, we, we know we know what our steel is going to be exposed to. But um, yeah, 59 minutes since launch should be coming up on on transonic and everything just about three minutes. Now the views here, we have coverage of all four flaps. We can see, uh, or so for those that perhaps didn't catch a glimpse of the vehicle before liftoff, there are two flaps at the forward end and two flaps at the aft end. The larger camera view that is there on the right hand side of your screen, that is a view of one of the aft end or the bottom end flaps. We can start to see some heat buildup and peeking through on one of the flaps there in the top left-hand corner of your screen. Once again, Starship now at T plus one hour and nine seconds into its flight today, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. 
uh, currently about 45 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, now 44. We are targeting a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean, uh, about, you know, oh, northwest-ish of Australia. And we are attempting to, as we did on Flight 4, make a... Uh, perform a flip maneuver as well as Starship a... Starship is at maximum entry dynamic pressure, remains on a good trajectory. All right, so that is great news there. Um, like Dan said earlier, this is basically Max Q Part 2. So this is the greatest amount of, uh, of aerodynamic loads that the vehicle will experience during its flight. It's coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. You know, it was uh, above the Earth's atmosphere in space where there was no friction. We can obviously see uh, heat re as a, you know, evidence of that friction buildup. Uh, the atmosphere is actually helping to slow the vehicle down. If you're watching the telemetry in the bottom right-hand side, right-hand corner of your screen, you can see that speed decelerating rapidly. Now the four flaps on the ship help steer the vehicle and one of the main objectives for the ship today is to demonstrate controlled re-entry uh, during this phase of flight, this re-entry phase. Yeah, and we have six engines on ship, but we only need three of them, the three sea level engines. Uh, we will have that flip maneuver happen very close to touching down for splashdown. We'll do that flip maneuver, ignite those engines, slow the vehicle down immediately, and then hopefully have a, what we call a soft splash, what we call a soft splashdown yeah. um, in the water. <laughs> it's probably gonna feel a little bit harder uh, on yeah. the top of the surface of the water, but and it'll look pretty gentle. <laughs> yeah, and like we said earlier, we hope to have some more views, even of that phase of the flight. So fingers crossed that we can uh, that we, we can bring those to you. Um, we are uh, hoping to splash down softer than we did last time on flight four. Um, right now, Starship continuing to make its descent back Starship to planet Earth. Starship is Mark two, remains on a good trajectory. All right, great news there. That tells us that the vehicle is traveling twice more than, or is traveling twice the speed of sound. So we will then, the next call out that we'll hear is that it is, uh, you know, traveling about the speed of sound. And then we will hear a call out that it is, that will be the call out that it, it is transonic. And then we will hear another call out saying that it is subsonic, meaning going slower than the speed of sound. Starship is transonic. There it is. So at this point, so at this point in time, uh, we say transonic because certain parts of the vehicle, like the flap that you see on your screen, uh, might be experiencing airflow faster than the speed of sound, <laughs> while other parts of the ship may be experiencing airflow. Starship is in the subsonic belly flop. All right, so now the entire vehicle is traveling slower than the speed of sound, so <laughs> subsonic. The crowd here at Mission Control Hawthorne also getting excited, just like us. We're awaiting uh, a water landing. We are going to reignite the three engines to perform that flip maneuver. And we're basically uh, about a minute and a half, wow, away from the landing flip. <laughs> Yeah, the, the crowd's getting excited here as we get closer and closer to splashdown. Again, just about a minute away from the expected splashdown. So we should see a lot happening um, coming up here shortly. We're currently having a view of one of the flaps um, and it is a little bit dark on your screen, but hopefully we'll get some good views of the ship as it makes that flip maneuver and uh, touch down for splashdown. Yeah. The, uh... Yeah, guys, we, we saw that we saw that speed drop like a rock. So we're basically, we're doing a belly flip right now or a belly flop right now. That's what's kind of, if you saw the high altitude campaign, that's the unique thing about how Starship comes back. So. We've bled off pretty much all of the speed we're going to. We're essentially at terminal velocity. Starship is at five uh, kilometers altitude. And then remains on target. Five, five to go. Coming up soon. Landing burn. Two kilometers away. Starship is on target. Approaching landing burn startup. 
So keep an eye on the bottom right hand side of your screen as well. That will be the indicator when the Raptor engines ignite if we are unable to see that illumination ourselves. Landing bird start up. we're going to be able to get a, a ton of extra video of the heat shield, but we hit the target. We hit the target. Yeah. I mean, you know we hit the target because we had these buoys placed in a pretty specific spot, so, wow. Um, what a day. I feel like that's, all, that's, that's what I get to say. What a day. Um, I mean, every, everything started off today with, with that launch. Uh, we were able to lift off towards the end of our window, 7.25 a.m. Central Time. Uh, 33 out of 33 Raptors in the way uphill. Successful hot stage. Booster came back. We watched it come down right behind us. Watched it get caught. And that, like, that broke my brain for a while. Um, I'm really happy we had coast for a bit, but that's First ever booster catch, major step on the way to rapid reusability. And ship just gave us one heck of a show, making it through a controlled re-entry this time. Flaps intact, made it down to the water. Uh, hey, starships were meant to fly, and it sure as hell flew today. So let's get ready for the next one. Over to you guys. They were meant to fly, and they were also meant to be caught by Mechazilla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been such an incredible day today. Congratulations to our teammates and to everyone who supported the Starship program. And thank you to all of our future customers for your support. And we'll also like to thank the people of Cameron County, Texas, as well as the Coast Guard, the Federal Aviation Administration, the Government of Mexico, and the Australian Space Agency. Now be sure to follow SpaceX on X for more updates on today's test flight uh, and of course for future Starship news. Uh, today was amazing, uh, but the SpaceX action isn't over yet. Soon Falcon Heavy will launch NASA's Europa Clipper and we're also going to be returning Dragon back to Earth with NASA's Crew-8 astronauts. So congratulations again to the SpaceX team. What an amazing launch and an even cooler catch. Thank you for watching, but we're going to leave you with an awesome recap of what has been the most epic day.